right. So uh, we are going to do everything, uh, talk about everything today through the live markets. We, um, you know, try to mix it up. Sometimes we do lesson sessions. Sometimes we do live trading and analysis sessions. Some of you may have been here before. Um, anyway. Good to see everybody. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to put them in the chat and we will deal with them. One of the, the, the focus today is um, profit zone. Profit zone is, is key. Profit zone is really a trigger for everything. If you're a swing trader, for example, actually it doesn't matter, whatever you are, day trader, swing trader, longer term investor, and of course, whatever market you're trading, stocks, futures, Forex, crypto, options, whatever. Um, you know, until you have a profit zone, you really don't have a trading opportunity, right? I guess the lack of a profit zone, there are option strategies we can use to take advantage of that. But overall, um, the profit zone is key. So coming into, for example, Coming into, let me go to the, and we can look at any market that everybody wants to look at. It doesn't matter to me. Let's go to the equity index markets. So coming into these markets, for example, while they have been, you know, trading higher, um, from a new entry perspective, uh, the last couple days coming into the session, the profit zone has only been about, um, I want to say about 2%, right around 2%, a little more, a little less, right? For example, yes, we have our 432 supply that we've been focused on here in the S, now we're looking at the S&P, but the demand zones have been very close, right? Uh, even today during our you know pre-market session, um, yes, the stock markets look like they were down quite a bit, but the expectation was that they're probably going to see a, a pretty nice bounce um, because we do have demand zones just below. So until this profit zone opens up, and we're looking at the S&P right now, we could be looking at um, any Forex market, any crypto market, any futures market, energies, metals, equity index, bonds, you know, you name it. Until the profit zone opens up, you really don't have an opportunity. For us, I can tell you, there are really two sets of opportunities for us that trigger very specific positions. When the profit zone in the markets we're trading, it gets up to between three and 5%, we have very specific trading opportunities that we take. When the profit zone is 5% or greater, we have a different position that we take. Does that make sense? And for us, it's just very, very mechanical. Um, right, but, but the profit zone is key. Just because you're coming to a supply or demand zone where price is likely to turn, doesn't mean we have a trading opportunity, right? We need to have a profit zone. For example, in, this, in the chart that we're looking at here, so we have our supply above, we have our demand zones below, and you know, now, for example, that this zone, we, you know, we've traded a little more than 50% into it, um, there, obviously there's less demand here now because we're able to go down to here. So the only sort of fresh demand left in here is between you know, the low of this candle and the low of the demand zone. So perhaps we fill, the market comes down, more of the buy orders here get filled, this zone goes away, right? Prices go higher. Then the profit zone will be opened up to this supply zone against this demand zone. Does that make sense? But we need to have the patience to wait for that to happen. Now, sometimes we can anticipate that happening, for example, um, coming into say, let's say the market closes somewhere up here and fills the gap, right? Which it's likely to do. Um, coming into the next day session, if we came up to supply, 
it's a pretty good chance that price will hit the supply zone, go through this demand zone and down to here. So once this is gone, the profit zone then gets opened up between those two. Right, does that make sense everyone? Okay. And, as, and again, we don't need to talk about profit zone this whole session. Um, we're always going to apply the rules of the um, original supply demand strategy in these sessions. So we can, um, you know, we'll, we'll move around markets and identify opportunities, but I will try to have a little extra emphasis on profit zone because it is a key point. Um, does anyone have a market that they want to look at, they want to take a look at? They want to have a market they want to take a look at. We can look at any of them. We'll apply some of our rules and find these opportunities. We can actually move to the Forex markets. Probably a good idea to start with the dollar. Um, we could certainly look at Bitcoin also. So the dollar is a good one to look at. And for those of you that have been in our sessions for, you know, for a long time, um, right? We've been very bullish the dollar for a long time. And what's one thing in my 20 plus years of doing this, uh, you know, the trading markets, I've never seen so many people out there try to talk down uh, a market, right? There's so many people out there saying the dollar's dead and the dollar's going, you know, going to be worthless and all this bearish negative dollar stuff. And the whole time, all we've had is price rallying from demand and new demand zones developing. And um, and there's nothing to suggest that that's not going to continue. Um, anyway, so the dollar does have, um, uh, we do have some supply up here that we're dealing with. And uh, there's that zone there. Okay, let's go down for the demand side. I'll run through a number of markets here. On the demand side, let's go to the 30 minute chart. So there's a demand zone that uh, notice price just touched the zone a couple times. Now, according to the rules, would we expect that to turn again if it comes down there again? And the answer is we would be okay uh, taking a position there, again, as long as the profit zone is there. But as far as the demand side goes, just like the supply side, until price moves 50% into the zone, we um, right we, we assume it's it's got a good chance there's enough of a supply demand imbalance to cause prices to turn higher again okay so there's that and then um, we have more demand zones a little bit lower a little, little bit lower in the range so that's the dollar um, yes we can go to uh, we can go to Bitcoin not a problem. It's been some great supply demand zones in Bitcoin. We can look at that. So most recently, just the other day, we came up to our first supply zone after the drop and price just touched the zone and is just just kind of sitting here right in the range. In the big picture, I thought we had that. Um, is that the monthly? Let's go. Yeah, I mean, you know, from the supply zones, um, can we rally, you know, up through this zone? We can. But uh, the charts are suggesting that there's a good chance that. Uh, we're going to come down to the uh, this area down here. And I think the more you see people try to talk up Bitcoin, the more you'll see it, you know, uh, you know, fall to uh, the demand zones. Right. We went over Bitcoin, I think, about a month or two ago in here uh, before the big drop. And, yeah, the supply zones above. Remember, in Bitcoin, we're just touching the supply zones and falling. And we're going fairly deep into the demand zones when we even hit them. GLD, we can certainly go to GLD. So GLD is the ETF 
for gold. And remember, for those that are new to the sessions, we always apply, uh, focus on the same strategy in here for many, many years since the first days of FX, the early days of FX Street. Um, let's go to gold, right? Quantifying supply and demand in any and all markets to help identify where prices are likely to turn and where they're likely to move to. So we have GLD here. Um, it's also good to look at the futures in a moment, but we did gap a little bit lower in GLD. We have an inside the range demand zone here. Remember, inside the range supply and demand zones are going to be lower probability than the outside the range supply demand zones. Okay. So there's that. Um, there's an outside the range supply zone up here, 168.70. Let's also go to gold futures where we have a new zone to look at here. Um, I don't know how close we are to it. Yeah, we're, we're moving away from it now. Um, tested 18.02 above the range. And that would be from an active trading perspective. So there's that one and that supply zone there. And overnight supply zone a little bit higher. That's what the gray circle means. Remember, we color code our supply demand zones based on probability. On the demand side, we have the gap demand zone down here, 1755. These would be the same areas in the ETF. We're looking at the gold, gold futures right now. But same areas in the in ETF uh, GLD. Okay. Any other markets anyone wants to look at? Um, we can certainly take a look. Take a quick peek at equities again. Moving a little bit lower. The um, the one market that is very strong today is Apple. Apple has been super strong. Let's go take a look. Because until Apple gets weak, the market's really not, not likely to move much lower at all. Apple's been sitting up in our supply zone. Um, almost went through it. Um, it's a very tested zone. This is the third, fourth time back up here. But um, it's been holding up for a few couple days here. But we'll see. Um, Apple's very likely to make a, a new all-time high pretty soon. But uh, again, until Apple gets weak, it's going to be tough for the market to fall too much. Sure, when we go to the S&P, we can look at the, we can uh, look at the S&P right here. And we almost hit our 4331 supply, uh, but didn't. On the demand side, go to we're still pretty far from those uh, let's go back to the spy if that's okay the spy is the ETF for the S&P 500 we looked at this chart a few minutes ago so the near-term actionable zones are found right here on the 30-minute chart there's that same supply zone I just showed you in the futures 432 on the supply side we almost got there yesterday didn't and then uh, we have this demand zone here, and then the fresh 424 demand down here. Okay. And we have the unfilled gap just above. Um, so there's that. The euro, yes, we can definitely look at the euro. So let's go take a look. Uh, good question in the chat. Yeah, that would still be, yeah, for us, it would, our rules still be valid. Mm -hmm. And it's not, yeah, not a, not a bad thing that it's hanging out just, just below a supply zone, just above a demand zone. That means orders are getting filled, which is often a very good thing. Remember, 
two, um, I don't know how many of you have been through the, the program or the workshop, but we, um, we, we enter positions just before the supplier demand zones, okay? So we have our entry rules, our, our rules for the protective stop, our rules for profits, okay? Here's the euro, let's take a look. So um, after, again, small range in the euro at the moment because we're still trading off of our uh, demand zone down there and the supply zone sitting just above here, the 102.15. So that's why the range is so tight. But now that we're trading deeper into these zones, the range is likely to expand. Where is that going to expand to? Let's let's take a look. We go to the this chart right here. You'll see just a little bit lower, right? Below this whole range right here, we have the 10105. The 10105 demand is sitting down here. But remember, we do have to get below um, this demand zone first that we're stuck at. Right? This one. We need to get below here first. Here's a concept that uh, maybe some of you have not considered before. Um, when price reaches this demand zone, what is the imbalance likely to be? Remember, the greater the supply demand imbalance, the more likely price is to turn, right? Change direction, turn. Make sense? Again, the greater the supply demand imbalance, the more likely price is to turn. So, you know, most of our focus is how big is that imbalance? Well, what about this demand zone down here? Is there likely to be a big imbalance or small imbalance? When we look at the zone itself and apply our structure and location analysis, um, this zone seem, this zone is fine. It qualifies. But what else can we look at? Well, the demand side is what it is for this zone, right? The picture kind of suggests that if you understand, you know, the rules and steps we go through. But what about the supply side when price gets here? Well, think about it. Um, price has to get through this zone first, right? It has to get through that zone first. So you can see there's a lot of selling that's going on to get price down here, but not enough to keep it there. Again here and again here. So it's likely to take a lot of selling or a lot of supply to get through that demand zone. We already have lots of evidence of that. So what's happening on the supply side, the sell side? More sell orders are getting filled. More of that, the, the supply ammunition is being used up. Okay. So the presence of this demand zone and all of the selling that's needed to get through it typically creates a bigger supply demand imbalance for the zone sitting right below it. Does everybody understand that? I want to make sure we're all on the same page. I don't want to confuse anyone. Right? The presence of that demand zone just above that that you know, is using up a lot of supply means that when price gets down here, typically there's going to be a big, bigger and larger imbalance than, than there would be if that upper demand zone wasn't there. Because at the end of the day, we can talk about news all we want. We can talk about uh, tons of things. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters when it comes to answering the question, is price going to turn, is the size of the imbalance, right? Profit zone, all that stuff goes along with that, but but it's the size of the imbalance. That's that's what's key. Okay. Well, let's keep going. Um, other markets. Any other markets anyone wants to look at? I have my whole list here. I'm happy to go uh, wherever we want. Microsoft, we can absolutely take a look at Microsoft. 
soon as the chart comes up here. Okay. By the way, same concept here, right? A lot of buying and selling is going on this morning so far, right? Here's the first um, almost hour of this trading session. Lots and lots of orders being filled here. Okay, the market can't get through here at the moment because um, you know we, we need more supply to get through here. So far, the demand side is able to absorb all the selling that's coming into the market today. And uh, once that last news-driven sell order is filled, we can see prices go up and fill the gap. But the presence of this demand zone that's absorbing all of the supplier selling coming into the market this morning means that when price gets down here, there's going to be far less supply than there would be if this zone wasn't here, creating a bigger supply-demand imbalance down here. Who could be saying this or having this conversation in any market? Let's go look at Microsoft. All right. So Microsoft looks very much like the equity index markets. Um, you can see, see how Microsoft is right up into our supply zone again for a second time there. And then, of course, on the larger time frame, uh, very big supply zone sitting a little bit higher. You'll also see down here, if I blow this chart up, right, the low of the day is just sitting in these two things. You know how we just, I just, we've been looking at these two demand zones on top of each other in the S&P. Well, you really have the kind of, I'm just going to combine two zones here, but you have the same thing here, right? Okay. Just like Microsoft, obviously a big part of the NASDAQ. So if we go over to the NASDAQ. No surprise that the NASDAQ as well has these two demand zones sitting here. Okay. And again, for price to go down through this area, same with Microsoft, we're going to have to run out of buyers or demand in Apple, and that's um, um, you know, not likely to happen um, too quick. When we focus on the NASDAQ, someone asked about the NASDAQ. We can take a look at the NASDAQ. Well, we can go back to the Qs. We didn't do the supply side in the Qs yet. The Qs, which is the ETF for the NASDAQ, right? Um, yesterday and the day before came right up to our outside the range supply zone. Outside the range because it's above these. And then we have our uh, tested demand down here, 316, but we're dealing with these small time frame demand zones right here at the moment so little gap down today nothing much and you know we're just right inside the uh um you know the uh back inside the range here going to the nasdaq futures uh yeah we can look at some of those other markets we looked at the dollar already but we can maybe look back if there's if there's time Certainly look at oil and natural gas. Natural gas has some good zones in the area. Here's the NASDAQ futures, which are really going to be the same as the Qs we just looked at yesterday, the day before, trading right up into our supply zone and um, beginning to fall. And this morning, trading right down into these two demand zones that are sitting on top of each other. Okay. Um, from here, we can very easily, let's see, I thought we had another zone. Um, if I go over here, you'll see the gap when we look at the day session NASDAQ, right? So again, gap, uh, gap down from that area to this area. Price is gapping from supply to demand, which is what typically happens when there's news. Right.
the if we go to the let's go over here. Um, oh, we already looked at that. Okay, yeah, let's take a look at some other markets. Sure, we can look at the pound against the yen. Let's do that. All right, and I have not looked at this chart in um, probably about a week, this one. Let's see what we have here. All right. One of the things to do, too, that we can, I just realized we can do is we can always go over here and look at the algorithm, right? Let's look at the pound yen. Because here the... Uh, this is an automated, our automated supply and demand tool. So we can see we are, um, up into, looks like supply here. These are, um, a mix of small time frames on the top, bigger time frames on the bottom. Looks like as price, you know, works through this area of supply, we do have a couple demand zones, uh, really same area, sitting just below. And uh, so perhaps a pullback, and then price moves up to the next supply zone above. Does that make sense? Okay. We just need to take out these demand zones first to make that, make that move lower. All right, but that's the pound yen. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, yes, oil and natural gas. We can take a look at that. So let's go to oil. Here we'll look at the 180-minute chart. So oil is uh, rallying off of our demand zone. We went over this one uh, yesterday and the day before in our sessions. Um, and the near-term supply zone is that overnight zone up there around 91.12. Again, just a reminder, so if you see different, like a, a square or a circle of a different color, that's because we color code our supply demand zones based on probability. Okay. So there's that. And UNG, if it's okay, let's go to the ETF for um, natural gas. Okay, so here it is. Now we look at this time frame, we see, I thought earlier in the pre-market trading, natural gas was a little bit higher, but anyway, uh, we definitely want to watch the $33 area above. Let's go take a look at that. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So you can see two supply zones on top of each other, both with gaps to the downside. Remember, um, we have two types of gaps that we focus on, the pro gap and the novice gap. These gaps represent a significant supply-demand imbalance. In other words, supply and demand is so out of balance at those zones that you don't even, you know, you can't even get any trading until down here, right? So we'll watch this uh, 33 area above. Uh, that's a fresh zone, and then we have the fresh 3050 sitting just below. And again, this is the ETF for natural gas, UNG. Okay. And then, um, yep, we can look at the Aussie 
um, US. Let's go do that. We'll just wait for this 30 minute chart to come up. Uh, let's see. All right, so the supply side there, quite a bit higher. There's the fresh zones, 7081 on the supply side, 6860 on the demand side. Both, I believe, are fresh. And they are. That's like two zones on top of each other. So we're getting closer and closer to that. Um, we are seeing a demand zone that's going to need to be taken out before we get to that lower demand zone. This is an inside the range demand zone, so lower probability. Also, we've also gone, already gone pretty deep into that, so um, nothing you would want to take again. But if you go to your 30-minute chart, you'll see the fresh supply zone above and the fresh demand zone below. Okay. And I can always... Um, um, and for, as far as the algorithm goes also, we can always look at, uh, we can look at any market, any time frame. Okay. Um, any other markets? Otherwise, I'll go down my list. We do have a lot of markets here. Let's go look at these equities. Okay. Um, let's look at what markets does everybody trade here? Stocks, futures, forex. We can do it that way also. Crypto. Okay. Forex. All right. Uh, let's go back and look at some more forex markets. We only looked at uh, two or three here. So why don't we take a look at the yen? And I'll mix it up between futures and the spot market. So the yen is falling. And we'll start with the supply side, which is quite a bit higher. We're nowhere near this at the moment. So we've got the 74.94 supply above. And then we'll watch the 73.76 demand below. But let's also take a look at the, I believe, I thought we had a zone like right here. Let's see. Yeah, very tested area. So you have this, and then the zone I just showed you is inside of this. So the yen could very easily bounce from this area, right? There's that area again below. Okay. Really two little zones on top of each other. And when we look at the spot market, more evidence here. So you can see uh, same thing, just like the futures show a demand zone in the area. We uh, The spot market has a supply zone right here. We've been here before. We've gone a little deeper than 50% into this level, so we wouldn't expect another Uh, another, uh, another wouldn't be entering a trade up here because that pullback was too deep. There's that. And then on the demand side, again, we'll go over here to the 30-minute chart. Ooh, that zone is very tested. Why don't we go to make things, always speed things up. It's very easy to go to the algorithm. The zones are already here. Okay. Here's the daily uh, dollar yen, okay? Um, and then here's that supply zone that we're into at the moment. Okay, a couple supply zones above. And prices, whoops, let's see. As far as the demand side, yeah, in the larger time frames, we do have demand below. Same, same thing here. Um, so the next one, on a little bit smaller time frame, this would be more for an active trade, the 134.50. Okay, 
why don't we take a look at the uh, let's take a look at the dollar Swiss. So here we are up into supply at the moment. While we're waiting for the other charts. So you can see um, price could not even get back to these supply zones. Here we did uh, we did hit that one, which makes sense. You know, price is obviously a lot lower. So you're going to get to a level where eventually you'll start hitting your supply zones. And then you get to a level where you know, price is going to start turning from the demand zones. Um, you know, it's all where we're at, big picture. On the demand side, in the dollar Swiss, sitting a little ways below current price, ninety, right around ninety-four seventy. We're sitting right in the middle, which is where markets spend most of their time, right? And then let's look at the uh, dollar Canadian. Well, I guess we could look at uh, we could look at Bitcoin again too, since we're since we have the algorithm up. Yeah, just every time we pull this up, it's just supply zones above, they keep working. That's kind of the theme of this market. Let's look at the spot. It's going to be the same thing, but... Yeah, just, again, um, you know, you can see we turned here at the demand zone I showed you a little while ago when we looked at Bitcoin, and now we've got this big wall of supply, uh, supply zone sitting, sitting above. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go on to the dollar Canadian. Not on my list, but let me just type it in there and click on it. And again, if you have a market that you want to take a look at, just let me know. All right, the Canadian, dollar Canadian is uh, coming to the upper demand zone here. We have the fresh demand zone sitting just below this one, 128.80. I thought maybe we'd catch some supply up there, but let's take a look. Larger time frame. Um, that one's still catching up. Hmm, not yet. Just waiting for that 420 minute chart to catch up. The algorithm's great, but it does, you know, tie up a lot of, uh, it does slow things down. Um, yeah, we can look at, uh, go. Oh, here's that 420. So after hitting the demand zone there, I thought we would, let's look back. Let's see, I thought we had a supply zone up there. I guess we don't. All right, someone asked for, um, um, not that market, hang on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, here. Let's go. Let's also go to the spot. Okay. So here is Ethereum against the dollar, right? You can see uh, if we do take out this high up here, we do have a supply zone sitting up there and uh boy i really need to wait for these these charts to catch up very slow at the moment the pd means pending data for those that uh, don't use this uh, platform all right that's taking a little too long 
Sorry about that. When we look at the, go back to the equity index markets for a minute. Oh yeah, uh, peace. Uh, no, it's good. Good spending time with everyone here. Yeah, I was looking at, I pulled off the S&P and the NASDAQ and the algorithms just finding the same zones that I've been giving you. So um, nothing new here. Couple zones though that are into, uh, let me show you. So a couple sectors, let's look at a couple sectors here. One of them would be XLB. This is the material sector, let me find it. I believe we came up to supply, yes. So we did come up to supply yesterday. Looks like we're right back in the middle. Um, but we'd watch this supply zone again around 82 and the demand zone that comes in right just under, right around 79.50. That's uh, that sector. And then XLY which is the consumer discretionary sector. This one also came up to supply, but notice how it just touched supply and gap down. So another move up into here, we would expect prices to turn lower. And then of course we have our gap demand below. Um, so we'll watch that one. Here's the, let's see. Okay. Uh, stock market still sitting here. Let's go take a look at these 30 minute demand zones. Let's see where we're at. Yep, just still sitting in here. Um, right. So plenty of room to come up and fill this gap. Uh, if not, there's a demand zone down here that can very easily turn things higher. Um, but I just saw the time and I see we're out of time here. Good to be with everybody. Yep. Thanks for the kind words in the chat. Uh, hopefully it's all helpful and, um, excellent. All right. Well, let's, we'll keep going. We have other, other dates on the calendar and we'll continue to make these as uh, productive as we can. Anytime we're together, we want to make progress, right? We, um, we definitely want to make progress and make the most of our time together. So good spending time, and um, we'll see you, see you next time.